Today we're going to be going over a little bit of finishing. Um, this is a walnut table that I've been working on. So I'm going to go over how I apply water locks. Um, what I use here is I use water locks original, medium sheen. You can get it at Woodcraft, probably Amazon. Um, I do it a little differently than most people. Um, I use steel wool. So not the kind of crap you buy at um, Home Depot to wash your dishes, but it's a uh, double double O steel wool. It's really fine um, and it works really well. The first thing I do with anything like this, like walnut, I'll put um, you know two coats of Danish oil to really bring the grain out and then I'll do multiple coats of water locks. The first coat I'll put on with a chip brush so I can get a nice build up, maybe two coats that way, put a heavy coat on so it gets, a, um, you know, the first couple layers are nice and thick. And then from there, I'll sand through to 320 or 220. And then from there, I'll go and I'll start burnishing with steel wool. So, you know, that stuff lasts a long time. <clears throat> you want to cut off a little piece? You just make it into like, a, you know, fold it into a little square. So you have something like this. And this is, you know, when you're doing it in this method, you can use this on other finishes as well. It doesn't have to be just water locks. I do it with general finishes, things like that. But you're burnishing as you're applying finish, so it works really well. Uh, next thing for rags, there's a certain way you're supposed to fold them so you don't get all the little hairs. I always fold the edges in, and I fold the corners. And I'll fold it once in half or thirds, not halves. So that way you have none of the little, you know, fuzzies on the edges coming out in your finish. Um, so, I always pour a little bit of water locks into some sort of measuring cup. So that way I'm not putting the steel bolt directly into the bottle. Um, and this is something that I learned from one of the head instructors over at North Bennett Street School and it's, it produces really great finish. And doing it this way, you don't have to sand between coats, which is huge. I hate sanding. So, all right, let me get another rag ready. I usually use two rags when I'm doing it this method: one to get all the crap off, and then another one to sand, uh, file it down. Set those off to the side. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but uh, from here, you know, just dip your steel wool in, get nice and soaked up. And then you just rub it up. So I do it, you know, I'll burnish it on. So I'm basically sanding again while I'm putting finish on the table. So it works really well, and as you can see, it produces a really fine finish. So I get the whole side. And once I kind of get it on there, I just go all the way down. Just to make sure I get it nice even with the grain. Alright, so once you've done that, because it's really fine steel wool, it breaks down and you're going to have pieces of steel wool in your finish. Now you just wipe it with the grain. You now I get the bulk of it off. This is where you're going to level everything. So, go all the way down. Nice even strokes. Slide it off the end of the table. So you're going to want to go like that. You don't want to stop right at the end. That leaves some funny marks. Okay. 
And once you get the bulk of the excess finish off, get another clean rag, like so. And then this is when you're just going to do the same thing. You're just going to smooth it all out. do it this method um, you're gonna need to do a lot of coats this is coat number six but as you can see it really brings out the uh, the depth in walnut with the Danish oil first and then water locks over it so tips from me stay tuned for more